Hi everyone, it's Louisa here, or Lou for short, and welcome to a very special edition of STEM at Home, What Do You Do? Today is International Women in Engineering Day. Last year, STEM at Home celebrated this day by showcasing some of the incredible women studying and working in engineering from around the world. This year, STEM at Home will be showcasing some familiar faces and also some new faces in engineering. I have asked these incredible women to share with you all what inspired them to become an engineer and also who are their engineering heroes because that is the theme of International Women in Engineering Day 2021. These women are my engineering heroes because they have taken time out of their busy schedules to come on STEM at home and share with you all what inspired them to become an engineer in hope of inspiring you to become an engineer. Hi there, my name is Kate Gunderson. Hi. My name is Joan Marie. My name is Steph. My name is India. Hi, my name is Lennis. My name's Bronwyn Evans. My name is Vinnie Tendo. Hello, I'm Rose. My name is Laura Cummick. Hi, my name is Maiki Pranda. Hi, my name is Lauren Amato. My name is Sandra LeBlanc. Hello, my name is Kat. My name is Georgia Hill. My name is Lucy Pocock. Hi everyone, my name is Ola. Hi all, my name is Danielle Schroeder. My name is Christina Pearson Rampiari. Hi, my name is Benita Husband and I'm an engineer. I'm CEO at Pitt and Sherry, an engineering and environmental consulting company. I am a mechanical and aerospace engineer and future flight test engineer. I'm an integration engineer at NASA's Launch Services Program down at Kennedy Space Center. I'm an aerospace engineer. I'm a biomedical engineer. I am a chemical engineer and right now work as a wellness engineer. I'm an electrical engineer. My background ranges from everything from working in power stations on construction of transmission lines, working in um, medical device design and manufacturing, and more recently as the CEO of Engineers Australia. And I'm a civil engineer. I'm doing mechanical engineering and I'm also a STEM advocate. I studied mechatronics engineering at Monash University along with a science degree. I'm a biomedical engineer. I graduated from the University of California in Irvine with a degree in biomedical engineering and a specialization in nanotechnology. I now work at a medical device company as an engineering manager in process development. I'm a civil engineer. I'm currently working in the geotechnical space, which pretty much involves analyzing the behavior of everything underground, whether that's the strength of soil or rock and the foundations needed to hold up a structure like a bridge or a building. I am an industrial engineer. I am an electrical engineer working in the space industry. I am a graduate civil engineer. I studied a bachelor of civil engineering with honors in hydrogeology. I'm a civil engineer and I work as a hydraulic optimization engineer for a software company here in Melbourne, Australia. I'm a mechanical engineering student. I studied civil engineering and currently work as a bridge engineer. And I'm an aerospace engineer working as a senior flight systems engineer. Although not an engineer, Sally Ride is actually who inspired me to become an engineer because as a little girl, I actually dressed up for, um, as her for a class project. She was the first American woman to go to space and she really inspired me to um, become an astronaut. Um, one day and to pursue a career at NASA. I wanted to become an engineer because I love working with my hands and I love to problem solve. I wanted to be an engineer because I was good at math and science, but more importantly, I really liked creating and bringing my ideas to life. I originally wanted to be a chemical engineer because I wanted to formulate makeup, but then I saw biomedical engineers creating different tools and systems that were helpful for medicinal applications and I became interested in biomedical engineering. I was inspired to pursue engineering for multiple reasons. Number one, I love science and math, especially chemistry. And then my dad and my brother were engineers and I also had other family members pursuing engineering and I felt so inspired seeing them problem solving and just creating these unique things and experience that I wanted to be a part of it. I was inspired to be an engineer for a number of reasons. Primarily, I wanted a job that was intellectually satisfying, allowed me to use my physics, maths and chemistry and was well paying, plus gave me the opportunity to travel the world and be a citizen 
internationally. When it came to selecting a degree after not getting into dentistry, it was actually quite difficult for me because I felt as if I didn't really have any options. I just had to settle for anything else. But the one person that actually helped me realize that there is so much more out there than just health was actually my dad. He's a civil engineer himself. And when he asked me, have I ever considered engineering? It didn't even cross my mind ever because I always thought that that's a field that's only for men, not for women. And I was so wrong. I love doing what I do and I love my job as a civil engineer. There is no way I would pick anything else over civil engineering if I had the chance to go back and do so. I was inspired to get into engineering because I built a motor in physics in high school. I had to build it out of magnets and make it spin. And it was such a cool experience to be able to build something from scratch and be able to problem solve and fix anything that didn't work. <laughs> so I went home after that and said to my mum that I want to be a scientist because I like creating things. And she said, no, Laura, you want to be an engineer. That's an engineer's job. My interest in engineering started in my junior year of high school. I was taking AP biology and I remember how my teacher at the time was just so enthusiastic about the body and all the cool things that it, it, it could do. And I had this crazy notion that I could find the fountain of youth <laughs> by stopping telomeres during DNA replication. Now, obviously that's not possible, but at that point I was hooked. In college, during my sophomore year, I actually fell in love with MATLAB coding and data analysis. And that's what really got me more uh, interested in engineering. And I knew then that's what I wanted to do. I would definitely say that what first got me interested in engineering was my passion for space. I've loved space all my life, ever since I was little. I've had a fascination for the sky, the stars, the planets, and, as I grew older and I started learning about the different space missions that were helping us learn so much more about our solar system, I started to ask the question, well, who is working on those missions? Who is actually building these spacecrafts? And that's definitely what did it for me. One of the things that inspired me to become an engineer is that I wanted to help people. So I wanted to make people's life a little bit more easier. So we have a washing machine and we have dishwashers at home or even a TV. All these stuff needed an engineer to make them possible. And they all help us make our life a little bit more easier. I was inspired to become an engineer because I always loved understanding how things work. And I also was interested in how to make things work better. Some of my engineering role models include Sally Ride, Katherine Johnson, and Ellen Ochoa, and also the wonderful women of the Mercury 13. My engineering heroes are both of my grandfathers. Their passion for aviation and engineering was passed down through the family. In Australia, between them, they designed airport runways, contributed to aviation publications, and worked at various aviation and engineering hotspots across the country. My engineering heroes are Susan Black and all African women who are doing engineering. My engineering heroes are the women around me, my friends, the women I work with every single day that thrive in a difficult industry. They work hard, they take up space, they stand up for what's important to them, all the while supporting and lifting up all the other women around them. When I hear that you're an engineer, you automatically become a hero. That means that you have persevered, you had endured long nights and very challenging times. So you should be proud of yourself as I'm proud of myself to be an engineer. One of my engineering role models is actually Tracy McBean, the famous inventor. This was a cartoon engineer, essentially, uh, of a childhood show that I watched. My engineering heroes are my two older sisters, Hilary and Claire. I've seen them work around the world, in rural communities, in big cities, in lots of different roles and industries within engineering. And I think I have found it really inspiring to see them bring their own flair and personality and skills to their jobs as engineers. I think all engineers are heroes, especially the women engineers that I've met through conferences and social media. Engineers created everything from vaccines to Google Maps. Engineers are real life superheroes as we are solving society's problems one day at a time. My engineering heroes are the engineers that took part in the ventilator challenge, those that helped to bring us the COVID-19 vaccine, and the engineers that are smashing stereotypes every day and helping to inspire the next generation of future engineers.